Gerust is a project generator for Rust backend projects. It takes care of the accidental complexity, so you as a developer can stay focused on what matters, which is creating value for your users and your business. And Gerust handles everything else for you, which is separating the project into concerns using a cargo workspace, defining a clear folder structure so it's always obvious what kind of file goes where, Providing patterns for the data layer with entity structs, change sets, and validations all based on SQL X. And providing a simple yet performant testing setup with out of the box isolation on the database level. And Gorust comes with tools for generating, running, maintaining migrations and seed data, as well as generators for controllers, middlewares, tests, entities, and more, all complete with scaffolding for maximum productivity. Gorust takes inspiration from other frameworks and other languages, but doesn't simply copy those. Instead, we carefully looked at typical use cases for Rust in backend projects and designed Gorust specifically with those in mind. And Gorust is, for now, purely a generator. All of the code it creates ends up in your repository and under your control, and there's no runtime dependency on Gorust. So let's get started and build a simple application, a task management app with a REST interface. We start by generating a new project. That gives us a complete project with everything we need in a cargo workspace. The web crate contains the Axiom application, which implements the web interface of our system. The DB crate contains the data layer with entities, migration, change sets, validations, and so on. The config crate contains the application's configuration, as well as code for reading the configuration for the correct environment on startup. The CLI crate contains binaries for generating various kinds of files, like controllers and entities, as well as for running migrations. And the macros crate contains Rust's custom test macros that make it easy to write tests that access the database yet are completely isolated from each other. And we can run this immediately. So now that we have the basic project structure in place, let's create a task entity that's going to be the foundation for our task management app. That creates the task entity in the DB crate. The entity comes complete with an example attribute, validations, a change set. We'll see later how change sets are used in Gerust, as well as functions for loading, creating, updating, and deleting tasks. Instead of relying on an ORM, which would add quite a bit of accidental complexity to the project, Gerust's data layer is based on simple entity structs and individual functions for interfacing with the database. Instead of fewer lines of code, but higher overall complexity, as it would be the case with an ORM, we decided to go with a few more lines of code, but lower complexity overall. So let's first rename the example name attribute to description as that's more suitable for our use case. Let's also change the fake data configuration, which in the example code is set up to generate fake name to generate a sentence with three to eight words instead for more realistic fake data. And we'll see how fake data is used in tests later on. Finally, we can remove all of the to-dos since the scaffolded default code is already what we want. Now we can run the project again, which does not work because the table does not exist in the database and we're using SQL access compile time query checking feature to ensure the correctness of SQL statements. To fix this, we create a migration for creating the task table.
which creates a migration file with the right timestamp in the right directory. In that migration, we add the SQL to create the task table. We migrate the database. And run the application again. Which now works. Now let's add a controller so we can load all of the tasks that are currently in the database via a RESTful interface. The first step is to generate a controller. Gerust comes with a number of generators out of the box. In this case, we'll generate a CRUD controller that comes with scaffolding of functionality for creating, reading, updating and deleting task entities. And that creates the controller as well as a test. The controller comes with functions for creating a task, reading all tasks, reading one task by its ID, updating a task and deleting a task. In this example, we only care about creating tasks and reading all tasks, so let's delete the functions that we don't need. And first, we want to be able to read all of the tasks that are currently in the database. The default scaffolding for the read all function is already what we need, so we just need to remove the to do and uncomment the scaffolded code. Then the only thing that's left to do is we need to route the function in our routes file. Now we can run the app again. And request all of the tasks via the tasks endpoint. Which does not yet return anything since we don't have any tasks in the database. So let's add one. And request again. Great. We can now load all of the tasks from the database without having written much code at all. And all of that, though, with a code base where concerns are clearly separated, for example, between the DB and the web crate. The last thing to do here is to add a test. When we generated the controller, a test for it with test cases for all of the CRUD functions was generated automatically. Since we're only concerned about task loading and creation here, let's delete all of the other test cases and disable the ones for task creation for now. That leaves us with a test case for reading all of the tasks that are currently in the database. And the default scaffolded code is already what we want, so we can just remove the to-do and uncomment the scaffolded code. When looking at the test case, the first thing we notice is this is not using Rust's or Tokyo's standard test macro, but a DB test macro instead. And that is Gerust's custom test macro for tests that rely on the database. The implementation is in the macros crate. What the macro does is it creates a copy of the main test database that is specific to the single test case. It then creates an instance of the application under test configured to use that test specific database and invokes the test function with a context struct 
that contains a connection to that database as well. In the test, you can then populate the database with data specific for this test case. The application will see that data as it uses the same database, but no other test case will see it as the database is specific for the single test case only. So what does the test case for the endpoint for loading all of the tests do? First of all, it creates a change set for a task with random fake data. As we saw before, the entity change sets are configured with fake data annotations exactly for this use case. The change set is then passed to the create function to persist the task in the database, and we'll see in the next step how that works exactly. We then request the endpoint. We want a test to load all of the tasks. And then finally, we assert that the response is what we expect it to be. So let's run this test. And it doesn't work since the tasks table doesn't exist. When we migrated the database before, we migrated the development database, but not the test database. So let's do that now and then run the test again. And now it works. Great. In the last step, let's implement the endpoint for creating new tasks in the database. The tasks controller already has a create function that we ignored before. But the code that was generated by default is already what we need, so we can use it as it is. So this takes a task change set from the request body, passes that to the create function in the task entities uh, module in the DB create, and then returns a status 201 with a JSON representation of the task. So then we only need to route this in our routes file. We need to start our server again. And then this works already. We can create a task and then we can load all of the tasks again and there's our new task. The last thing to do is to add test coverage. Let's re-enable the test for creating a task again that we disabled earlier. What do these test cases do? First, in the test for an valid task being created, we create a change set with an empty description. That does, of course, not satisfy the requirement of the task description having to be at least one character long as defined in the task chain set. And then when using the create function to create the task based on the data from the chain set, if the chain set is invalid, a validation error will be returned, which is going to be converted to a 4 to 2 response in the web crate. The test for the successful creation of a task uses a change set with valid fake data and passes that when invoking the endpoint. That results in a successful response with a 201 response code and the JSON representation of the task in the response body. So let's run these tests. and they work. And that's how to build a simple RESTful interface with Gerust. Of course, we left out a bunch of things like updating and deleting tasks, and Gerust offers more like, for example, support for middleware, so full tracing setup out of the box and transactions. All of those concepts are explained in detail in the docs on gerust.rs.